The TrekWorks YouTube channel is sponsored by HDA Modelworks, suppliers of scale lighting products, detail accessory parts, and complete model kits. Visit HDAModelworks.com today. Hello again everybody, Boyd here with you and welcome to part 3 of our Polar Lights 1 1000 scale Discovery Enterprise. Uh, left off in the last video talking about moving on after we worked on the uh, saucer and the uh, secondary hull, got some lighting done in that and those are pretty much ready to put together. And I did a little quick video the other day showing you some of the lighting that I'm putting in. I had one nacelle done and everything else ready to be buttoned up so I'm back today with uh, a look at the final part of the assembly here and I wanted to cover the uh, last nacelle with you guys to show you how I'm putting the lighting in this. Um, you can see here that uh, we have the first thing I want to talk about is the uh, the engine grill here which is going to be really important because whenever you put lighting behind these you have to worry about hot spots in other words the little pinpoints of light that come out of your LEDs and you don't want to see those too bright so what I did here on this is I used some blue LED tape this is some double density LED tape here and I glued it to the very top so that it won't point directly at the uh, the grill, but it faces down and kind of then reflects around in there instead. Uh, so that took care of a lot of the uh, hot spot issue that we had to worry about. You can see I've got the grill glued in now. Now what I did to uh, further uh, make it so you didn't see the hot spots was I dusted on a little bit of silver here on the inside over these lenses. That's pretty much the same as the hull color. And what that's doing is diffusing it down a little bit more and uh, making it a little bit dimmer too. I don't want it to be like, you know, I don't like these grills to be really blindingly bright, you know, they should just have a nice subtle blue glow coming out of them. So you can see the nice thing about that too is when it's turned off on the outside, the lens has, uh, you know, it blends in really nice with the uh, with the outside of the, uh, the nacelle here and it looks more realistic that way instead of just seeing a little clear piece of plastic in there. So that works really good. I did something similar to that. Uh, back when I did the Enterprise D because you, you know the, the grills going around on that when the power is off they have a kind of a goldish uh, copper color to them so I dusted over those with a little bit of the uh, copper color now you have to use an airbrush to do that you can't do that with a brush or a, a spray can because a spray can just won't um, spray a fine enough mist You'll, if you do it with a spray can you're probably going to see little dots in it um, so an airbrush is the only thing that will work for that. Unfortunately, if you guys don't have an airbrush, I wouldn't recommend uh, trying that on this then because it might you might not be happy with how it looks. Um, but the airbrush just sprays such a fine mist that just one little light pass over the whole thing, you know, on the inside here, and it, uh, it worked great. And the light still comes through it fine. Now you can control the amount of light, like if it's really bright to begin with, um, just making a couple more passes will keep making it dimmer and dimmer and dimmer so you can kind of control how much light you want coming out of that. You know, like if you like the rest of the lighting and everything else and you think this might be too bright, that's one way you can do that. Instead of taking the bulb, you know, and making it, or taking a resistor and making the lighting, you know, dimmer and dimmer that way, um, as long as you don't go too far, like I said, and then, you know, block all the light from coming through there. So that's how we took care of that part. Uh, you can see I've got one five millimeter blue LED hit here at the rear uh, to light the tail. Uh, that part there, the clear part, um, it took lots of coats uh, of uh, paint to get that to stop leaking light. It's, it's because of the little micro fin detail or ridge detail they have molded onto that clear part. The rest of it worked really good. So what, when I finally got to the point of, um, you know, after about two or three coats and I realized it wasn't going to block any light, I went and I started painting from the inside then, you know, just took a brush and went around the outer edge and everything and that took care of the light leaking once and for all uh, the very tail end of it uh, let me let me grab the part here really quick and uh, I'll show it to you so this is the tail cap that goes on there and it's a completely clear uh, molded part and uh, you know it's regular clear it's not blue or anything and uh, with these little fin details on here it makes it really hard for the paint to get down in there and uh, you know to, to, you'll see little thin slivers of light 
leaking out of that. So I finally went around and painted the inside of it. Now to get these little details right here, you could take a hobby knife and, and, and scrape away on these. Um, but it's, it's going to be really tedious and you're not going to make them all nice and even. You're going to scrape too much here and there. So I just did it like this. I took my, um, my pin vise here with this. I picked a drill bit that was uh, just about the size of these little circles right here. And I kind of came at them like, at an angle like maybe about like that. And uh, I just like spun it, you know, I put it, pushed it against it and spun it like one or two times. And uh, that took the paint off there and left nice little round, uh, you know, cutouts there where the paint's been scraped off. So that looks really nice and clean. You get a whole bunch of little paint burrs and stuff in there, you know, laying in there. So I'd take my little toothbrush here, just after I did like a roll of them, I'd just go in there and like knock it off, you know, like you got to do this when the paint's really dry. So wait, you know, a good while after you paint this, you don't want to do it when the paint is soft, do it when the paint's dry and everything and then it'll kind of just crumble and come right off there and leave a nice clean edge so you'll see how that looks a little bit later when I light this up um, but it came out really nice and uh, like I said I just went around and painted the uh, the circle part here and uh, tried to stay away from the in you know didn't get any paint on the inside where this flat part is where you see this little detail and that helped a lot with getting rid of those light leaks once and for all they were really stubborn didn't want to go away so um, I've got the motor worked out. Now I talked about this motor setup in the last video. Uh, you can see I got my extra tenant controls motors that came in. And this is a nice little high quality motor with steel reduction gears. They have the reduction gears because the motor by itself would spin too fast. So uh, they gear reduce it down so it spins at a slower rate. But these are designed to run at 12 volts. And uh, at that speed or at that voltage they spin way too fast. So uh, one of the things I like to work on on these Bessards is, uh, you know, you've got this little nice fan detail in here. And if you spin those too fast, they get blurry and you can't even see the detail. You know, you got to spin it slow enough where you can see that detail spinning just like it did on the TV show and the way that, the, you know, the original ship and the way this ship looks on the uh, screen from what I can tell. They don't spin very fast. So um, what I did is I used this, this uh, transistor I talked about. I'm using 12 volts on this model and I'll talk about that in a little bit more on the lighting too why I decided to go 12 volts but so this can take up to 30 volts in and reduce it down on this little pin here which is your output uh, down to 5 volts right so it'll produce a steady 5 volts with in my case I got 12 volts coming in and then uh, when it goes through here it comes out the other side at 5 so uh, I, I'm keeping the motor circuit separate right so like the power going to the motor only down down through the uh, pylon here and everything and into the hull it's on a separate line so that it only goes through this uh, transistor to the motors only everything else in the model gets the full 12 volts uh, to the control board to all my strip lighting to the little lights all the SMDs the SMDs that are in here so um, that's gonna solve that whole problem my motors will spin nice and slow now on this ship and on the original Enterprise they when they're when you're looking at it facing it towards you they're supposed to spin inboard toward each other so the starboard side spins clockwise and the uh, port side spins counterclockwise so to reverse the motor all you got to do is just uh, reverse polarity of the wires so on one side I got them going one way and on the other side I go them the, the opposite way like you know connecting to plus and minus and that makes the motor spin whichever direction you want it to spin it'll work either way so we got to make sure you pay attention to that detail um, so that that's all you know set up pretty much now I got the other motor in here got the, uh, the the Bassard dome mounted on that uh, the way I talked about on the last one I routed the wires through here and then glued them in place so they did you know they didn't interfere with any of the gears that, that are inside this uh, being they're open you don't want to have a wire get caught in there so it's all wired together now and ready to go I've got four SMDs in here 0805s um, I talked about how I had to modify that little bulkhead there where the lights sit uh, we had a mill about a sixteenth of an inch off of that to make it shorter so that the uh, motors would clear. These motors are a little taller than the uh, round two lighting kit motors. So you have to make a little bit of space on there if you're gonna put lighting in there. And so all that's worked out. This is all set up and ready to go. Um, all I have to do is no, now is glue it into this, you know, it's got these little tabs it sits on right here and it'll be glued in place. Um, so this side of the uh, 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 nacelle is all set up and ready to go. You can see I got the LED tape. I did it halfway across so it's coming down equally on both. Now one thing I want to mention too, just real quick as a little tip, uh, you know this LED tape has the sticky backing on there, and uh, but I don't trust it over time. It can dry up or whatever and you wouldn't want that to fall down in here and stuff like that. It'd ruin your whole look. 
might short out against something. So I always glue it in place. I, I got three spots here where I glued it with some CA glue. And then just before I close this up, I'll dab a couple drops on the top of this too. And when it closes, it'll glue to this other half and be in there permanently and it'll never move. It's just a, it's just one of my pet peeves. Um, I try to, you know, you put a lot of work into building these models and time and everything. And I just try to always think about, I want it to last a long time. I don't want to have any kind of problems. So I don't mind doing little extra things and using extra material and stuff like that just to go the extra mile on it. It just, it pays off in the end. So, but what I'm going to be doing now is uh, we're getting ready to put this together. Let me show you what's on the other side here. Uh, on this side here, we got the uh, part where it's, this is the outer side of the nacelle, and it'll have the uh, pennant here with the uh, NCC 1701 name. And you got these two little lights right here that are supposed to kind of do that floodlight effect again. Well, on this particular area of the model, like we talked about, it didn't work on the saucer. It actually does work here. And the reason why is you can see it's flat. The, the raised area there where the light's coming through is, is uh, you got a nice flat surface in front of it instead of it curving down. You know, you're not trying to make the light make a turn like that. So it does give a nice little floodlight effect in there. And uh, these little slots are already opened up for you. I just took my hobby knife and ran it across them a couple times just to make sure there wasn't any flash, you know, or anything like that in there. And then um, I glued these two little, these are three millimeter lighthouse LEDs. These are the ones that have the tiny little, you know, they're, they're rectangle, they got the tiny little tip on the end of them. I grinded that tip off with my Dremel tool and just made it flat. And you can see they drop right down in these slots perfect. So I didn't need to use the kit uh, supplied. There's little plastic lenses that come with the kit that you put in there. Didn't need to use them in this spot because now the LEDs acting like the lens. I just CA glued them in place. And then uh, what'll have to happen is I'm going to have to light or I'm going to have to paint over these uh, like I did on the other side so you didn't see any hot spots because that's directly across from the grill and you'll have like a little bright spot right in the middle of it where this light would be hitting so I'll just paint over that with some of my craft acrylic black and then a little bit of white after that and those will be completely blocked the only light that will come out will come out right in these little slits right here now talking about that grill again and the way I painted it if the light coming out of here is winds up being too bright I'll just dust over it a little bit with my uh, with my uh, hull color again that'll blend right in on this nacelle and that'll knock that down just a little bit too so you won't see it as much you can control that so then over here you got these other two little lenses in the center which are supposed to light in blue right so that picks up the lighting from our blue LED tape that's lighting our grills the kit comes with two little clear plastic insert parts right here I didn't use them again I used my solar res here uh, a lot of people keep asking me about this too uh, this is you can get this at www.solarres.com. I'll put that link on the screen again. The, the the type of stuff I'm using, they got a lot of products there, but this is the one you want. It's called the uh, hard finish uh, doming compound or doming resin. This is their four ounce bottle, and uh, I used a little bit of this, and I just ran a little bead across it. I had a little bit of piece, you know, clear piece of scotch tape on the outside, and I just ran a bead across each one here, and then dried it with the. Uh, with the UV flashlight here and um, took about 15 seconds and you can see it, it made these really nice clear lenses in there and they're perfectly flush they look beautiful they look just like little pieces of glass this stuff is actually uh, more clear and transparent than the kit molded glass is it's it's just really really nice and uh, so now we're gonna have our nice blue lighting coming out of there those will pick that up really nice it's the same thing I did on the other side and you can see how how nice it looked in that video so um, those two lights are in, pre uh, in place so pretty much everything's ready to go once I install the motor and glued in I'll be coming back in here and putting all my wiring together you know I kind of bend things down and get everything you know spaced out as evenly as I can get my wiring this is the, the most you have to kind of at the end you have to kind of you know get this all tucked up nice and neat and all kind of folded in here like this and and then all your solder connections put together so when you close it it's all nice and clean and we don't have any wires uh, getting back in front of the grill or anything like that that grill has to be completely open So none of the you don't see shadows or anything like that. So that's what I'm going to be working on next. I'll come back and show you the uh, The nacelle all put together and then it'll be ready to connect to the rest of the ship and uh, We'll be able to start making some hay here It'll be close to sealing the whole model up and once we get that far It'll be just a little bit of seam cleanup and some touch-up painting and and she'll be done and waiting for the decals um, you can see the pylon here. Here's where I got the wires coming in. Let me explain this to you real quick too. I pre-glued these wires in place before I put the pylon halves together uh, because like if you do that afterwards, there's no like clear channel 
for this wire to be pushed through. It'll wind up, if you try to push it through the bottom, it's going to wind up like bottoming out up in here. It'll be a real, real hard time, you know, pulling the wire through there. So put your wires in ahead of time, glue them in place so they can't move around or slide, and then uh, seal it up, and you'll be fine there. So you can see I got three wires coming out here. I got a ground, and uh, I got two different red wires. Well, the reason I got two different ones is because of what I talked about with the motor. One of these is going to power straight to the motor only, and that's going to be on this little transistor right here which is going to drop that one line down to five volts i mounted this transistor in the center of the hull on the supports for the pylons you'll see there's a little kind of bulkhead in there a square one i glued it on the bottom side of that and then so the wires can come straight to it and and not have to travel very far and then the power wire coming off of it that's coming from the rest of the ship just connects right to that real nice and easy so that uh if you run this at 12 volts or 9 volts it won't get hot at all like i said it's got the heat sink on there but if you start going much higher than that, up into the, you know, I don't know why you would want to, but up to the 15 or 20 volts coming in, then it starts to have to use the heat stink to help it keep cool. And then it, if, you, if you're if you going to have a situation like that, you got to be really careful what you mount it to because it can get hot and, uh, you know, melt and fall off or, you know, it could uh, damage something close by it or whatever. So just keep that in mind, too. We'll show you how that's mounted before I close up the hull and all that. So I'm going to be busy here for a little while. I'm going to be uh, gluing all this together, get my wires cleaned up. Uh, uh, maybe I'll give you one last look at it before I shut, you know, shut the door on it. And, uh, and then we're going to be moving on. Things are looking really good. This is a great little kit to work on. They've done a good job on this kit. I think it's going to be really popular. Uh, a lot of people like the design and everything. And um, it's just a really neat little model. It turns out really nice. And this aftermarket, you know, uh, I don't know if Tenet Controls is going to do a lighting kit for it. I hope they do. Uh, but you get, you know, adding the little few things here and there, blinking lights and, and adding a little bit of extra lighting and everything really brings this model up. It's, it's really, really cool. So I'll be right back in just a second, everybody, and show you how the nacelle is looking. Back again, everybody, and I made some good progress here. Got all my wires tucked in and everything. Got my harness all put together there. I put a little zip tie around that because we had a bunch of mostly the the smd wires coming off of the motor here had to get those in a nice little grouping there got my plus and minus coming in on two separate lines like i talked about we got one here uh for the lights and one for the motor everything sharing a common ground just one wire for that so we got our five millimeter blue led at the back with a 470 ohm resistor on that the wires have all been glued down here with a couple drops of ca glue to keep them from getting in front of the grill nothing will move or anything everything's tucked in really nice Got our two side marker lights over here with a, another 470 ohm resistor hooked up to both of those. Got them light blocked and everything so we don't have any leaks coming in there from the side lights to our grill. The motor's all wired up and ready to go. Made sure I got the polarity right so that the, uh, the motor's spinning the correct direction for the side of the ship it's going on. And it's spinning uh, clockwise in this case. So we'll turn on the power here and you can see everything working. Got our tail light there, got our strip lighting at the top. Got our uh, SMD lighting here at the spinner and got our side, side marker lights over here. So uh, this is all ready to close up. I've taken my hobby knife and scraped all the way around the edges here and got it all cleaned up so it's ready to take glue. Uh, we got our separate wire here, like I said, for the, um, for the motor that'll come down into the hull and connect to that five volt output coming out of our little uh, transistor that we're using, the L7805. That's why the motor's not spinning right now. And uh, so this is ready to close up and ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, get it all glued together. Uh, I'm working on the little seams on the pylons here. I got a seam on the top mainly on this one that I gotta clean up. We'll get that all done. And then um, in the next video update, when we come back, we'll have uh, uh, the hull ready to close up, these ready to go on, and we'll do all that. And pretty much I think in that next video, we'll be able to finish this model up. All we'll be doing then is waiting for the uh, Aztec decals to come in. I can't put any of the other markings on because they have to go on top of the Aztecs, the name registration and all that, the pennant markers and everything. So she's going to look kind of bare until the decals come in and hopefully that's not going to be too much longer. But uh, we'll be back with a final video and showing it all coming together, guys. Nice little model kit. It's working out really great. And uh, hope these uh, tips that we showed here will work out for you guys and uh, decide to do it this way. Uh, it's working out pretty good. All right, we'll see you in the next video, everybody. Take care and happy modeling, everyone.